Hi everyone, it's Alison. Thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to be making some Christmas cards using the stack, cut and shuffle technique. Um, I've only actually just discovered this technique. I'm sure it's been around for a long, long time. Um, but I did see a video, well in fact there's several videos online, but showing it in the smaller C6 size uh, card size. So I thought I would do these in a 5x7. And this technique makes four cards really quickly and so I've already gone ahead and I've cut and stamped my toppers that I'm going to put on and also stamped my Merry Christmas sentiments and just put them onto um, some cardstock. So to make the four cards, as I said they're five by seven so you're going to need four card bases and this is um, 10 inches long by seven inches high and it's scored at five inches in the middle so that gives you your five by seven card base. You're then going to want four pieces of cardstock and these measure six and three quarters by four and three quarters and then you're going to want four sheets of pattern paper. You want your patterns set up so that they complement each other so it's from the same uh, paper pad uh, but then I've gone for the darker blue then the white background then a darker background then the white background and all be made clear uh, when we start doing the cutting um, and these measure four and a half inches by six and a half inches let me just double check that so I'm not giving you the wrong measurements yeah four and a half inches by six and a half inches and what you want to do is when you cut your pattern paper just check that if there's any orientation like mine with my trees just check that you've got them up the right way okay so you want to bundle your pieces of cardstock together so grab a trimmer line up your pieces so that they're bundled together equally. Position it in your trimmer whilst trying to keep them bundled together and we're going to make our first cut at three inches. Okay, it does want to move around a bit so just try and Keep them together as best as you can. Okay, and then cut through all of your pieces. Okay, and then without moving them, just move this thinner piece to the side for now. And you then want to rotate it and so we're now on our just six and a half length so we're then going to I mean it's up to you where you want to cut it I'm going to cut mine at I think three and three quarters like that and so I've rotated it so I've got the top of the trees on the left hand side and so I'm going to cut at three and three quarters like that and then just position them to the side but don't shuffle them up okay so we'll just put that like that then grab your thinner strips here and this time rotate it so that your directional paper is facing that way and we will cut this again at three i'll do that at three and a quarter no three and three quarters i think that didn't quite look right three and three quarters okay and then just position those like that on your table
and then what you do and this is where we start so we've now stacked we've cut we're now going to shuffle so we'll leave this pile alone grab this top right hand corner uh, pieces here and take the top one and put it at the bottom like that okay then grab this section here this pile here take the top one put it underneath then take the second one and put it underneath like that okay and then grab this pile and take the top one put it underneath the second one put it underneath and the third one and put it underneath like that okay so then you'll have all different pieces okay so then just move those to the side making sure you don't shuffle them as you do it and then grab one of your card base uh, not card bases sorry your mats and just grab the top one from the first pile and just lay that down at the moment grab the top one from this top right pile the top one from the third pile whoops I've grabbed two there like that and then the top one from this pile and so then what you're going to do is just stick these down onto your card base and just push up the pieces so that they they go together okay so I'm going to glue my pieces down okay and that's our first card made all right and so then you can then put on your decoration wherever you would like to, to put your sentiment and what I've done here is I, I've put my topper just where the joins are here I just find that's just nice there just to be able to cover those up and then your next card you will grab your your mat and you just grab the next piece of pattern paper down on the top left and then grab the next piece and the next piece and the next piece okay and so then you've got quick easy cards but looking slightly different so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick all my pieces down onto my mats Okay, so I've now stuck the mats onto the card bases and you can put inside, uh, if your card base is, is dark like mine, you can put inside um, a white insert there, a white mat so you can write your message. But haven't these, they're just, they're so lovely and they're so easy to make. And actually if you'd like to, um, if you like these papers, what have I done with them? Actually, just bought them today from the range it's by art studio and they're just called silver glittering really lovely papers um, some beautiful patterns in there and I think the only negative is the fact you can't tear them out very well I've had terrible trouble trying to tear them out so it might be worth trying to um, just separate them all but yeah I think it was four pounds something from the range so yeah really lovely pack of papers so that's the cards in the blue and silvers really pleased with how they've come out 
I did make some earlier in craft and reds and golds as a bit more traditional colours. But if you look, at, you know, it's the same style. In fact, this one, I didn't bother using a white mat. I just went directly on the card base. So what I'll do is I'll give you the measurements for the pattern paper used and I'll pop it in the description box below if you, in case you don't want to, to put them on a mat. So the width of the paper, the pattern paper, would be four and three quarters by six and three quarters. So it's basically the size of the white mat that's on this card. And then I cut it at three and a quarter, like we did when we did this part here. So three and a quarter, and then three inches down and then rotated the paper and then did three inches down. I hope that makes sense. I, I will pop the um, measurements in the description box below. But as this for me is a, a quick video, I just wanted to show you another card that's a similar concept and is just as easy. And it's going to be another 5 by 7 card. And this time I'm going to be using a white card base. So it's again 5 by 7 So it's 10 inches across, 7 inches deep, and then it's scored at 5 inches. And then I've got a piece of pattern paper. Now for this particular style card, you're better off using paper that has got some sort of picture on it or a scene. I find it does work better if you've got that. And then what you want to do, so this piece measures six by six. So we're just going to cut it down. So grab your trimmer. And as I say, this is a six by six piece of pattern paper. And you want to put it in your trimmer so you've got it the right way up and you just want to cut it at four inches okay so then you've got that piece here and this piece is going to be scrap so you can use that for a different project then what you want to do with your piece is we're going to cut it similar to like we did with the other card so we'll first of all cut it at one and three quarters Okay, and then with your thin piece, rotate it so that you've got the bottom of your picture on the right hand side and cut at three and three quarters. Okay, and again just put that to the side like that and then grab your other side and this time rotate it so you've got the bottom of your picture on the left hand side and cut at three and three quarters. Okay. And again, you don't need to do your measurements exact. You might prefer to have, you know, have it in the middle and not have this uh, sort of off-centered cuts but I just find it just makes it look a bit different okay so once you've got those pieces we're then going to map that or map those onto black cardstock and so just measure your pieces of pattern paper so this is one and three quarters and I'm just going to do it an eighth of an inch bigger so if that's one and three quarters, I'm going to cut that at one and seven eighths. And that's going to be three and seven eighths. OK, so I'm just going to do that one eighth. There, so it'll just be that mark there, one eighth bigger. So three and seven eighths by one and seven eighths. So again, you want to do that with black cardstock or whichever colour you'd like. OK, 
okay and so now your pattern piece will just sit on top of your black mat like that okay so measure your other pieces so this square piece is two and a quarter by two and a quarter so I'm going to do my black mat at two and three eighths by two and three eighths and then this piece we will do at two and three eighths by three and seven eighths and then the final piece is one and seven eighths by two and three eighths okay so that's our pieces there and before I stick them to the black mats you can just stick them now as is but what I'm going to do is just add a bit of sparkle I cannot have a Christmas card without sparkle but as I say if, if you don't want to have any sparkle then you can just go ahead and stick these pieces onto your onto your black mats but what I'm going to do I'm going to heat emboss my sentiment, my Merry Christmas sentiment and I'm also going to put some snowflakes on there as well so just position your, you could you could do this before you've cut your pieces actually um, but sometimes I've done that and then I've found it's pulled off some of the um, embossing that could be because I've overheated it but I find it's just as easy to cut it and then emboss it afterwards so for this I'm going to use my anti-static bag especially where the sentiment goes I'm not too worried about where the snowflakes go because any bits on there to be honest could be bits of snow so just line that up and if you've got a scene where you've got this nice bit of empty space that's brilliant so I'm going to just stamp my in fact let's move this down a bit so I can see stamp my sentiment on this nice empty space and you won't see that actually because obviously the uh, embossing ink is clear and then I've got a snowflake stamp so I'm just going to randomly just stamp some snow there we go and because we're using Versamark it will stay wet for ages so we'll now use some nice sparkly embossing powder and I'm using metallic silver sparkle find embossing powder amazing it always looks like you've got more when you put it back never have understood that right so that's all of my embossing powder on so I'm now going to heat set that right, that's all my pieces heat embossed and so now you just want to glue these onto your mats right so that's our pieces stuck to our mats there and so now you want to grab your card base and you just want to position your pieces onto your base first before you go to glue because this is going to be giving it a slightly bigger gap than 
perhaps you're, you're used to. There, so just position your pieces like that. And you could, if you wanted to, put um, oh, what is it? The foam tape on the back, just so that it, it lifts it up slightly. But I'm just going to stick mine straight on. So once you're happy, roughly where they're going to be positioned, you can then glue the pieces to your card base. Okay, and that is actually our finished card. Doesn't that look good? And it's so simple. And I'll show you some variations. Here we go. And so this card is actually exactly the same pattern paper as this one here. But you can just see it just looks ever so slightly different because I cut it in equal squares rather than in the separate shapes. And the sizes of this, the um, black cardstock is two inches square, and then I cut the pattern paper one and seven eighths of an inch square. And so I used the six inch piece and then just measured over one and seven eighths, and then one and seven eighths, and then rotated it and cut one and seven eighths again. And then before I actually cut it, in fact, I don't know if you can see, there we go. I actually run it through an embossing folder first and then just stamped a sentiment. This one is with different paper and again I just stamped directly onto the paper. And look at this one. Let's say that's why it, it does work better using an image rather than just a repetitive pattern. And these papers actually are, they were stamping up ones um, called, uh, is it Feels Like Frost or something like that. I don't think they'll do them anymore. I got these a couple of years ago and I think um, they discontinue their pattern paper every year or every other year. So you might have someone that's got it, but I have seen a similar design to this. Um, in other in other paper packs, but this one I did with a rose gold, and then there's that one there. But don't they look good? And these are just really simple. So a very similar concept to the stack, cut, and shuffle. <laughs> very simple cards, and I hope you really like these and that you'll give them a go. And I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. And also if you hit the bell icon, you'll be notified when I upload another video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.